I think every Sagittarius riser will eventually discover this video. Now, is that because I'm the best astrologer in the world? I could wish, but no, really the credit goes to Sag Rising because they're the best students in the world. Now, I'm not referring to the educational system, even though many Sag goes on to get their PhD and excel in higher institute of learning, but I'm talking about the students of life, the students of wisdom, knowledge, ultimate truths. These are the things that Sagittarius excel in. And you know, when you listen to many astrologers, you know, they're talking about Sagittarius as, you know, living life fully, how they're the adventurer and the explorer. And there's definitely uh, an adventure and exploring part to their personality, always looking over the horizon to see what's coming around the corner. But why are they an adventurer? Why are they explorers and constantly searching to see what's coming their way? Well, it's because of the one ultimate goal of every Sagittarius rising soul. And what is that goal? Expansion. A Sagittarius rising person has come to this planet to evolve their soul, to expand their soul. And they know the quickest way to expand any soul is through being exposed to information, exploring different cultures and different wisdom. You're not going to really grow if you don't know. So that's why the Sagittarius has got that curious mind to keep learning and seeing how other people do things and going about life curious. That curiosity serves a purpose. The purpose is, what's the real truth? The truth about this world and the different systems and different things that people teach. But ultimately, what is the divine truth? What's the things that are so true that even after I leave this body, there is still going to be true. You know, I'm still going to be ready to meet my maker, go into the life force, go into another dimension. It's these ultimate truths that truly expand the soul of a Sagittarius riser. That's why they're always trying to cover ground. They're covering ground is because what? Remember the archer, the arrow, the symbol of the Sagittarius pointing an arrow towards a target? Well, what's the target? The target is expansion of knowledge expansion of wisdom, expansion of ultimate truth. And that's why they're covering a lot of ground is because they know that the more that they can discover, the deeper they go. And the deeper they can go down into themselves, the higher they rise. That's what Sagittarius wants. They want to rise high. They want to rise above the noise, above all the different uh, things that are irrelevant and get to what really is essential. And you can only know that by covering everything that's out there, being exposed to everything so you can process and for yourself know what your soul needs to do to grow. Now, I'm excited because in this video, you're going to want to save it. You're going to want to subscribe right now and ring that notification bell. Why? Because I'm going to cover a lot of ground in this video for Sagittarius rising to grow their soul. We're going to talk about the four aims of life that is seen in the Hindu tradition. You master these four areas and you have mastered your life. What are they? Number one, your life purpose. Why am I here? What's my purpose? Number two, your money. How do I make money? How can I grow my wealth? Where will I find my best success? Number three, your happiness. What truly is going to make me happy? What really will give my life the most joy? And then number four, spirituality. Where is my enlightenment? How can I connect to the divine? What is the ultimate truth for my beliefs? You know, these are four areas that I think everybody wants to know about. Why am I here? How can I be successful? What will make me happy? Is there a God or goddess or some type of system that I can believe in? Well, for you, my friend, the answer is yes. There is in astrology a way to answer all four of these questions. And we're going to go into it in this video. I'll break it down into four areas. You can even look at the description part and jump to whatever area you want to go to. Maybe you're struggling spiritually, go to that fourth aim. Maybe you're struggling financially, go to that second aim. And you just click it. But I suggest... You put this in your favorite videos so you can look at it from time to time to stay on track, to reach your goals, and to expand your soul. So let's get started with purpose number one, the life dharma 
of a Sagittarius riser. One of the most important questions that you will ever ponder or answer for yourself is simply, why am I here? What is my life purpose? What actions should I be doing in this lifetime? You know, some people, unfortunately, are on their deathbed feeling like they wasted their life because they never could quite answer that question on why they were here, what they should have been doing with their life. I don't want you to waste one minute longer trying to figure out what you need to be doing with your life. This is answered for you in the astrology chart with your first aim, Dharma. Dharma is life purpose. It's your responsibilities. It's the actions you need to be taking in this lifetime. What I need to do and what you need to do might be two different things. Many people have different dharmas. But if you're a Sagittarius riser, you have a, a similar dharma to other Sagittarius risers. There are certain actions you need to be taking because you're a Sagittarius riser. Now we see dharma or responsibility, duty, the actions you need to take through the fire signs in the natal chart. It's the fire signs and the planet in fire signs that tell us what our duty in this lifetime is. Why fire sign? Because fire is about inspiration. If you're not feeling inspired to do something, then you won't take action. If you don't have a desire to do something, you won't fully commit. But when we have a desire, an interest, an inspiration, which inspiration means in spirit, we really feel compelled to do something, we're really interested in this subject, interested in this dream, this goal, then we're gonna start taking action. And life purpose is all about taking action. You can have a lot of great ideas, you can have a lot of dreams, but if you never take action, then you're never gonna fulfill your purpose in this lifetime. So look at the planets that are in fire signs to see what actions you need to be taking. Now what's interesting is that the traditional Dharma houses, life purpose house in the astrology chart is one, five, and nine. This is where all Sagittarius risers have their fire signs in whole house astrology. We know that you have Sagittarius in the first, because it's your rising sign. Then you got uh, Aries in the fifth, and then you got that Leo in the ninth house. So Sagittarius, Aries, and Leo are one, five, and nine. Any planets you got in the first, fifth, and ninth house, these are Dharma planets. These are life purpose planets. Now, traditionally, what are the planets that rule fire signs? Well, Aries is ruled by Mars, Leo is ruled by Sun, and Sagittarius ruled by Jupiter. So wherever the Sun, Mars, and Jupiter is in your natal chart, those planets and in those houses can tell you something about why you're here, the activities you should be pursuing, the actions you should be taking. So pay, uh, pay special attention to Mars, Sun, and Jupiter in your chart. But outside of the three traditional fire planets, we want to actually look at the planets that are in one, five, and nine. What planets do you have in your first house? Now, you all have Sagittarius in the first. What, like, this, like I said in an earlier video, for being a Jupiter riser, a Sagittarius riser, your duty right off the bat is to be a person that seeks wisdom. Because Sagittarius is about seeking wisdom, seeking higher knowledge. It's that ninth house rule uh, planet, right? Sag rules traditionally the ninth house. Ninth house is higher education, philosophy, spirituality, religion. It's the high concepts. So, you know, that's why I, when I said one of the most important questions you can ask is why am I here? I know a lot of Sagittarius risers are asking these questions. Not just why am I here, but what is the ultimate truth? What is real reality? What is, uh, you know, uh, the, the wisdom? that is divine. So we know that with Sagittarius Riser, the ninth house has a lot to do with teaching and sharing uh, information. And so part of your duty in this lifetime is to teach the things that you're interested about, to teach the things that inspire you, to communicate with the world, uh, you know, 
through your actions, your beliefs, what you believe, what you, your ideas. And so, you know, your life path is very much one of communicating these deeper thoughts, these higher thoughts, these thoughts that, you know, very much make us human, you know, not only hum human, but make us conscious and aware and even divine. So what plan is do you have in one? Because the first house is all about your personality. So whatever, besides the rising sign personality, what if you got a planet in there, like Saturn in the first, maybe you have a more serious personality. Or you put Neptune in there and you have a more idealistic, more creative personality. So you want to see what planet you got in the first, because that planet is very much not only part of your responsibility, you're responsible to that planet to do the things that planet represents, but that planet is very much a part of your identity. Now, when we move over to Aries in the fifth, you know, fifth is all about romance, creativity, children, and so having fun. And so we know that part of you pursuing your passion in this lifetime, the actions that you need to be taking is engaging in a creative outlet, doing things that, that you can, that you are inspired to produce, whether it's a painting, a drawing, writing, whatever, the dancing, that fifth house rules creativity. So we already know that a Sagittarius rising are some of the most creative people in the world and that they need to engage in their creativity, but it's in Aries. So what does this say? This says that Sagittarius, part of your duty is to pioneer new creative outlets, to be a visionary in creative fields, and to do things, not how the experts say, but by your own intuition, by your own vision. And what's interesting is I would encourage Sag to date, to romance. You know, they say Sagittarius are full of life, right? Full of life and exciting. Why? Because Fifth House is about fun. So, I'm going to tell you to pursue that fun, to do activities and actions that are fun. Why? Because it's going to open up that creativity and creativity and sharing creativity is part of the reason you're on this planet. Now, a lot of Sagittarius will also have children because fifth house rules children. So a lot of you will discover your meaning in life and your purpose in life through teaching children, working with children, having your own children. Now, not every Sagittarius is going to have children, uh, but every Sagittarius is responsible for taking care of their inner child, connecting to their inner child, doing inner child work. You know, some of the sacred scripture says, unless you become his children, you cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. And, the, you know, the, and then he went on to say that the kingdom of heaven is within you. So we know that what do children do? They have a, ch they, they play at recess time. They allow their imagination to go. They just let down the cares of the world and enjoy the moment. Sagittarius, when you can live in the moment and not get so caught up with all the responsibilities all the time and be more playful and spontaneous and open, that's where a lot of you begin to take the right action, the inspired action, the higher action, because now with that playful childlike energy, you're tapping into the higher realms of your creativity. Now, romance, romance, romance. A lot of you are going to, are here to, to be the Casanova. You're here, you know, to be the diva. You know, what do I mean by that? Well, fifth house rules romance. Romance is quite different than marriage. Marriage is a commitment. Romance is a feeling. And, and, and so I'm going to encourage you that, you know, that feeling of falling in love. What does that feel like? You know what I'm talking about. That, that all that, how it just washes all over you, that euphoria. Well, you need to have that kind of experiences. So don't shut off your dating life. Don't shut off the romantic flirting and the playfulness because that's an energy, believe it or not, that you're here to actively pursue. Why? Because it's actually going to do what? Sagittarius things. It's going to expand your wisdom through opening up that heart, that heart chakra. When you open that heart and you're vulnerable and wide open, yes, you may be hurt, but you're fully alive. And, and that's what we always say about Sagis, right? They're, they're, they're the most fully alive people. They're brave enough to be vulnerable. And so I want to encourage you to allow yourself to have that playful energy in your dating life. Now, uh, outside of that, we go to the ninth house, Leo. 
right? Leo, what is he? He's the king, right? Leo, king of the jungle. It's the actor. It's the person that's supposed to be on the center stage. All lights on them. This house is part of your dharma. Part of your life's responsibility and duty is to shine and be the authority in that ninth house area of what? Higher wisdom, spirituality, um, you know, the the even even in the educational system, you know, even learning educational things where many Sagittarius go on to be great professors. And so once again, it's that teaching role, that communication role, that ex exposing people to these greater truths. And so, you know, it's okay to think of yourself as an authority figure. It's, you know, Leo's about to shine. Leo is about being center stage. So we need you to take a stand and share your philosophy. Take a stand and not be willing, you know, don't be a wallflower. Leo is about expression, you know? And so a lot of Sagittarius will be writers because Night House rules publishing, you know? And, you know, Leo, you know, you could even do all kinds of, just all kinds of creative things that's supposed to deliver eternal truths, you know. And then also Leo, these are people, ninth houses travel, foreign cultures, foreign places. And so, you know, you can really shine overseas and you can really build your fame in just, you know, somewhere outside of your homeland. And so these are things to think about. But outside of just, you know, their Sag and Aries and Leo, you want to look at one, five, and nine. These houses and the planets in these houses will tell you who you are and what you should be doing. So with that being said, the next thing we're going to look at is, all right, I know what actions I should be taking. I know what I should be pursuing with my life, but how do I make money? How do I build wealth? And we're going to see that in the second aim, Artha, how you build wealth in this lifetime. I got my mind on my money and money on my mind. Now that we had just covered the first aim of life, Dharma, let's take a look at the second aim of life, Artha. Artha is your wealth producing ability, how you can earn money, how you can release the financial abundance of the universe in your life. You know, you may be the most spiritual person in the world, which Sagittarius rising by nature is very spiritual, but I'm a material, material, I'm a material girl. Shout out to Madonna, old school, meaning it still takes money to survive on this planet. Yes, I know there are a few people that have nothing to do with money. They're in the cave or they're in the wilderness and they're not very concerned about cash. But for the rest of us, we got to earn a living. And the more money or stable money that we can have coming in, the easier our physical existence will be on this planet. You can have money and spirituality at the same time. And if you have trouble doing that, Keep watching my channel because I share about the abundance of the universe through spirituality and through practical things we have to do with just being human. But if you're wanting to know how you can earn money, where you can have the most success in creating wealth, you want to look at the earth signs. Just like how the fire sign shows us what actions we should take as far as our life purpose, the earth sign shows us the careers that we can do to create wealth while we're making a living. Now, the earth signs are what? Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn. So wherever the planets Venus, Mercury, and Saturn are in your chart, you want to look at it because it's going to tell you something about how you can earn money, how you can tap into abundance, and how you can create wealth. Why? Because Venus is the ruler of finances. And then you got Mercury, which is the ruler of business. Many people make their money through some type of business. And then you got Saturn, which is the indicator of career. So we all have to work at something. And so Saturn can tell you the kind of work you can do. Mercury can tell you the kind of business you could do. And Venus can tell you the different areas where you can make money. So look at Venus, Mercury, and Saturn in your chart. But for all Sagittarius risers, we also want to look at the traditional money houses, two, six, and 10. So any planets you got in two can tell us how you personally 
can make money. Any planets in six tells us the work you're doing, your day-to-day -day work, the environment of the work you're doing. And then number 10 is not just your work but or career. We look at the 10th house for career, but it's even bigger than that. It's your calling, the, the things that you are going to be known for, your reputation. So we want to look at planets in two, six, and 10 to get an idea also on the activities and the themes that can release money into your life. Now, for all Sagittarius risers, they have uh, right in that second house Capricorn and in the sixth house Taurus and in the 10th house Virgo. What does this mean? Well, first of all, it means that even though Sagittarius are the life of the party, they like adventure, they like excitement, when it comes to their career, when it comes to making money, when it comes to investing money, they are actually very more traditional, sound, steady, solid, and and so they could, you know, do a lot of crazy things with their personality, but when we start talking about money, they become very serious, and we see that with the Capricorn in the second. Now, if you're a Sagittarius riser, and there are other people that seem more financially successful at a younger age than you, I do not want you discouraged, because Sagittarius risers you're playing for the long haul when it comes to your financial life. Uh, the earth signs, Capricorn, Taurus, and Virgo, these are signs that grow better with age. They're slow and steady. So when it comes to your career, when it comes to uh, seeing your financial bank account rise, it's going to be a little bit more of a slow but steady process. Some people will have quick cash, fire signs, quick cash, uh, air signs, great, brilliant idea, make a lot of money, but they spend a lot of it or it's gone and it dries up. Uh, easy come, easy go. If it's a little harder for you, Sagittarius Riser, to get into seeing what you feel like should be the rewards of your effort, don't get discouraged because you are building for the long haul. So look and see what you got in that second house. And so we know with uh, Capricorn in that second house, you will be serious about your money. You will care about what am I going to do for retirement? What am I going to do in old age? These things matter to you. What planets do you got in that second house? Because that's going to tell us a lot about how you can earn your money. A lot of people that are singers and musicians, you'll see Neptune or Moon in that second house, right? Or if you got Mercury in the second house, you could be in the communication business. Mercury rules communication, some type of business, uh, you know, because Mercury rules business. You may have Venus in that second house, and Venus has a lot to do with, you know, pleasure. So you might be more in the hospitality or uh, the entertainment industry. So you see how knowing what planet is in that second house tells us the things that you can really build up in the long long term. So don't get discouraged if you're not seeing instant success with that planet. Just stay faithful with it because in the end, it's going to pay off for you. Now, when we go to that sixth house, your work environment, you got it in Taurus. Now, Taurus, as I said, is ruled by Venus. So this means that you like a pleasant work environment. You don't like drama in your workspace. You don't like there to be a lot of, you know, um, uh, even a hierarchy, believe it or not. You like there to be that, you know, Libra, I mean, Venus is, Taurus is somewhat like Libra. Venus likes things to be fair and just. And so you do like your work environment to be a very fair and just place, but also physically beautiful because Taurus likes things that are pleasurable. So even if you're working at home, Make your office space, put some candles on, put some nice uh, fragrance in the air, put a nice picture, because it's all about vibes for you. And so many of us, right, we spend so many of our years at work, you know, the previous generations, the older generations, they were at that nine to five and around the work people more than their own family. So and you need to kind of in your mind think, if I'm spending so much time in work, I want to make sure that I'm working with people that I that I vibe with, that I like, that I, I have fun with, and we connect. I also want to be in an environment that feels, looks good, feels good, and I'm going to enjoy it. Because if I'm going to give so much time to be in this environment, I want it to be in an environment that's not producing stress and, and causing me to be, you know, uh, uh, 
worked up into a knot. I want to be in an environment where I feel appreciated. I've, uh, people are thankful for me. And I really am enjoying what I'm doing. Uh, of course, you know, sixth house is also your everyday work. What you do every single day. Venus ruling there. You can do anything in the financial industry. Once again, you can do anything in the beauty industry, home industry. Look at Venus themes uh, for everyday work. But even if you don't have Venus in that sixth house, I'm saying that because Taurus is, is, is ruling that sixth house for you. But look and see what other planets are in that sixth house. That will tell us a lot about your work environment and the type of work. So, you know, if you if you see a planet that's talking about medicine, right? So Neptune rules drugs and it's in the sixth house. We could see you doing like pharmacy, working in the pharmacy, doing something in the medical field. And so that's the type of stuff you want to do. You want to look at what kind of career does this planet symbolize and, and study those things out because those are the kind of careers that you're going to actually enjoy doing. Now, we go to that 10th house in Virgo. Listen, Virgo, Virgo, Virgo. So, Sagittarius, you can be somewhat a perfectionist about what you're doing, meaning you care about the work you're putting out there because you know whatever I'm putting out there is a reflection of me. I know a lot of people, they're just like, they go in and they don't care about the work they're doing because it's just a paycheck. But Sagittarius Riser, you care about your image. Virgo is very image conscious. Yes, we have Libra that's flashy, you know, likes to look good. But Virgo, they really do care about what they're doing. And Virgo is all about self-improvement. And so with Virgo in the 10th house, you really do care about improving the lives of others. You'll be really good in, once again, like we're looking at the medical fields because Virgo rules healing. Or, so we see anything in the healing field or the energy field or counseling because Virgos are phenomenal counselors and guidance. And so we know that ultimately as you get older or as you are a, established in this, this world financially, people will see you as a problem solver. This is someone that, you know what, bring the problem to them because they have such a sharp mind to come up with solutions. They're going to see you as a wise person. I, you know, they can say well, all they want about Virgo sons, like, oh, they're not great in love. Listen, there ain't a problem. The best problem solver is a Virgo. And you got Virgo on the 10th. So when it comes to, you know, your career, you're going to be known as that person that, you know, they can figure things out. They can help people. They can guide people. They can teach people. So many things there uh, with that Virgo in the 10th house. So you really want to look uh, at what communications you're doing because Virgo, Virgo rules communication. So we're, we're looking and saying you could do really good in the speaking field, writing field. A lot of you Sagittarius, you should be writers because you're ruled by the ninth house, which is the planet of publishing. But now you got Virgo in the 10th, which is uh, the zodiac sign of the communicator, of the teacher, of spreading knowledge. So you can definitely you know, be trainers and be people that are consultants and advisors and all kinds of stuff. So you got a lot of things to look at. You want to look at the planets in 2, 6, and 10. You want to look at your Venus, your Mercury, and your Saturn. And this is going to tell you a lot about the careers you should be pursuing. And Sagittarius Riser, you can have abundance. Get out there and crack your money code by looking at those Earth signs in 2, 6, and 10. All right, let's go take a look at the third aim of life, which is your happiness. Because isn't that what it's all about? A teacher asks a small child, what do you want to be when you grow up? Child thinks for a second, I want to be happy. Isn't that what we all want in life is just to be happy? Happiness is so important that in the four aims of life, aim number three, Kama, actually means the pursuit of happiness, joy, pleasure, the things that really would make you happy in this lifetime. And in the natal chart, our happiness is found in the air signs. Why the air signs? Because air rules thoughts, what you're thinking about. It rules the ideas and your beliefs. And for anyone in the world, one of the greatest metaphysical truth is your thoughts create your reality. Your thoughts create your feelings. If you're constantly thinking negative things, it will produce negative feelings. Negative feelings will make you do negative actions. And the cycle just keeps repeating. Unless you can what? 
change your beliefs to positive thoughts, which will create positive feelings, which will create you doing positive actions. So if you're feeling really terrible and it seems like life is always against you, what are your beliefs? What are you thinking? What are you your dominant thoughts? Now, for all Sagittarius risers, there is even more insights into what you really should do activity-wise that will bring you the greatest sense of happiness and joy and pleasure in your life. And life should be happy. Life should bring you pleasure. It isn't supposed to always be miserable. So for Sagittarius risers, the happiness houses, the houses that give you the most pleasure and bring you the most joy is actually three, seven, and 11. 3, 7, and 11. You got Aquarius in the 3rd, Gemini in the 7th, and you have that Libra in the 11th. Now, what does this specifically mean for Sagittarius rising? Well, 3, 7, and 11 are relationship houses. Every one of those houses involves some type of relationship. The third house is relationship with your neighborhood, your siblings, the people that you are growing up with. Seventh house rules the relationships of your heart as far as in marriage, your business partner, the people that are closest to you, that you're committed to. And the 11th house rules your relationship with the, the greater world, the organizations you're a part of, the groups that you're a part of. So 3, 7, and 11 are all relationship houses. So what does this mean for Sagittarius when it comes to them discovering joy and happiness and pleasure in their life? It simply means, Sag, you're not meant to be a hermit. You're not meant to be isolated. You're not meant to, you know, uh, be in solitude all the time. Your greatest connection, happiness, joy, feeling really content in your heart is connected to other people. It's connected to other people. As I always say, life is all about relationships. Happier relationships equals a happier life. Healthier relationships equals a healthier life. Sag, if you can invest in your relationships, that's where you're going to get the greatest contentment, peace, and joy. So the extra time you're taking to build solid, strong relationships, it's just going to make your life that much more meaningful now and in the future. So let's kind of break down these relationship houses for all Sag risers. Now, Sag, you got that Aquarius in the third house. Well, third house rules communication. So it's really important for Sag to feel like that they can uh, be progressive in their communication, intelligent communication. Doesn't surprise me, right? Because you're the sign of wisdom. You're the sign of higher knowledge. But you're also very much an independent sign. Aquarius in the third means that you like independence in your conversation. You don't want anyone to control what you're saying or trying to control what you're thinking. And you like to be somewhat forward. Aquarius is about, you know, a revolutionary. It's about, you know, progress. So you like talking about things that can take us forward in society, that can bring progress. You want to be part of the positive change going on in this world. Now, when we go to the seventh house of Gemini, what does this mean about your closest relationships? It means that for you to truly feel joy and happiness with your marriage partner, it's got to be someone that's willing to talk about anything. Because Gemini, once again, rules communication. It rules being able to think anything. No thought is off limit. Our mind is, you know, the true uh, endless frontier to explore. So if you got a partner that's not comfortable just brainstorming and bouncing off ideas and being interested in different things, you're going to wither in that relationship. You gotta have a stimulating conversation. You gotta have someone that can stimulate your mind with ideas. And, and so, you know, once again, Sag is that higher mind and even the logical mind. It means I don't want to brain dead relationship. Yes, she may be beautiful and he may have muscles, but if he's boring and she's dull, out of here. I want a partner that can engage in stimulating conversation, that can introduce me to different subjects and different topics, that doesn't mind, uh, you know, versatile conversation. Now, outside of that, when we go to that 11th house Libra, what this says about the groups you like to be a part of. You like to be part of groups that, once, that are social justice. 
that want to bring fairness and equality to the world. Because Libra is about balance. It's about justice. It's about equality. And it's ruling the 11th house. What's the 11th house? It's your groups, but it's also humanitarian efforts. So Sagittarius, you truly find great sense of uh, accomplishment, purpose, happiness, when you are part of groups that are just, that are fair, that are trying to make a change in the world, that are trying to take the world forward, trying to raise human consciousness, you know, I mean, you just don't want to be part of groups that, you know, Libra likes to have fun, it likes to socialize, so once again, you want a very group that you feel like you can just socialize in, laugh in, have fun, but at the same time, is very much compassionate and caring about helping other people in this world because Libra is a relation, relationship sign. So if you're part of groups that don't care about you or they seem to be very stiff, very cold, it's not for you. It's not for you. That Libra in the 11th, man, it says, I want to be a part of people that like to really share their life, connect with others, are really interested in my life and I can be interested in their life and that we can also do things that are truly going to bring society, once again, like that Aquarius in the third, bring society forward. So relationships are where you find your happiness. And so if you're not expanding conversation, if you're not finding people that can stimulate you in conversation, that want to think about possibilities, that want to dream. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, we can't change society. Oh, everything's going to be the same. These people ain't for you. They're, 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 they're just not for you. You're about going forward, progress. You're about connecting, having fun, making a difference while having fun, and really opening your heart and connecting to others. That's where you find your happiness, Sagittarius. And so, listen, everyone. You want to see what planets you got in 3, 7, and 11. The planets you got in 3, 7, and 11 are really going to tell you the activities and the themes that you want to be talking about. You know, if you got Saturn in the third, it means you're really serious. You like to have serious conversation, right? Hmm? And then maybe if you got Neptune in the seventh, you, you like to have a partner that's spiritual or creative or idealistic, right? All these things that are going on, you got to look at what planets are in three, seven, and 11. These planets are your happy planets. You're starting to feel sad. Do what these planets want you to do and you'll find happiness. Same thing. If you're losing direction in your life, Go back to the Dharma, 1, 5, and 9. The planets in 1, 5, and 9 bring you direction. If you're not making money and things seem to be tight financially, go back to 2, 6, and 10. The planets in 2, 6, and 10 are going to release abundance. And like I just said a few minutes ago, your happiness is in relationships. Don't isolate yourself, but specifically look at for relationships that are going to expand you mentally, emotionally, and definitely with a worthy cause. All right, we're going to see you in the last aim of life, aim number four, which is our connection to higher self, spirituality. You know, as a soul coach, I personally believe in a higher power. Now, whether you call that God, goddess, some other name according to your particular faith, energy, universe, for me, I believe that there's something that is greater than I can see with my naked eye. Especially as an astrologer, I have seen that there is a higher system, there's a higher power working to keep all of the cosmos going, but also is working in our own individual life as well. And that brings us to the last and fourth aim of life, Moshka, which is really spirituality, enlightenment, uh, freedom. Because really, there's a lot of people that are working and make money, but they're miserable. There's a lot of people chasing sex and, and all kinds of pleasures, but they're empty. And, you know, I, I believe that you should enjoy sex and drink and pleasure. And I see nothing wrong with trying to be successful. Because remember, the four aims, they want you to have a life purpose. It wants you to make money. It wants you to be happy. But in all that stuff, don't forget that we are a spiritual being having an earthly experience. And that fourth aim is probably the internal aim that 
Where are you connected to your divine source? Where are you going when you take that last breath? Are you going to another dimension? Are you going to heaven? Are you being reincarnated? I'm not here to pass on to you what you should believe. But the fourth aim is trying to tell you that you do have a divine spark. You do have a soul that is eternal and it can connect to what we call divinity and how it connects and how it grows for a Sagittarius riser, how they grow their spirituality, how they have enlightenment, comes through the fourth and eighth and twelfth houses. These are the traditional spiritual houses, houses of higher enlightenment for all Sagittarius risers. And these houses are the water signs. Spiritual houses, why water? Because water is about emotion. It's about feeling. It's about intuition. It's about feeling things that are invisible, you know, vibes and energy. And so I'm going to say for a Sagittarius riser, the fact that you have the traditional 4, 8, and 12 water houses being the houses connect to your spirituality says that for you to have an aha moment, for you to have enlightenment, for you to have a greater understanding of eternal truth, it must resonate with you on an emotional level. If it doesn't resonate with your spirit, it's not for you, Sagittarius. It's not for you. Now, I know a lot of Sagittarius are religious because ninth house rules religion, but Sag, it's not about you having an experience. It's not about you believing someone else's experience. We can read the Bible, the Quran. We can read the Gita. We can read other people's experiences, and, and we begin to say, this is what I believe. But for true enlightenment, it's not about believing someone else's experience. It's about you experiencing for yourself. And that is what all the mystics were trying to say, is you yourself can have a divine encounter with the universe, with your higher power. And so if someone tells you something, even if it sounds good, even if it looks spiritual, if it doesn't resonate in your heart, in your spirit, just leave it alone for now. Same thing when someone's trying to say to you, oh, I feel that God wants you to know this, or I, the cards are telling me this. If it doesn't resonate, if it doesn't give you the chills or a quickening or it feels like it touched you in the feelers, don't buy into it. Don't just blindly believe it because your spirituality is very connected to your intuition. In fact, when we look at your house of spirituality, the fourth house starts with Pisces. This tells me that all Sagittarius risers have been very intuitive from the moment they were born, that they were able to feel energy in the room and pick up on people's feelings and are very intuitive because Pisces is intuitive. Pisces is also imagination. So Sagittarius could have a very wonderful imagination as a child. Some sad children probably saw ghosts, angels, uh, you know, different uh, 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 magical, mystical beings in other realms where a lot of us, that don't have that type of uh, Pisces in the fort would think that these kids are just telling stories or making things up. For some of you, Sag, you really did see that stuff. You really did connect to different dimensions. You actually can experience God through your imagination. Pisces rules imagination. Neville Goddard, one of the uh, uh, original metaphysical teachers in the 50s, said that another name for God is imagination. And he went on to say that if we think God lives in heaven, then heaven's our imagination. That's not to mean that we're making things up, but what it means is that our imagination is the possibility of what happens. The scientist imagines a theory, and then after a while, he proves it. Uh, same thing with doctors, the same thing with people that are artists. You know, Michelangelo uses imagination and sees the, you know, the statue, and he he, you know, he, he carves out David. And so what I'm trying to say is allow your imagination to think of all the things that could be that are possible, even if we don't believe it, because in your imagination, you will connect with God. God will speak to you. You know, Pisces rules dreams. So a lot of Sagittarius risers, God can speak to you in dreams and, and, and messages in your dreams. Keep a, a dream journal all the time if you're a Sag rising. 
Sooner or later in your life, you'll have what I call prophecy dreams, little nuggets of the future, because that's how you're open. God speaks to you in dreams. The universe reaches to you while you're sleeping. That's why it's great for Satch to do hypnosis. Listen to some hypnosis, lucid dreaming, free CDs on YouTube that can put you in a very med uh, meditative sleep as you're drifting off. So not only do we see Pisces in the fourth in our childhood and in a deep part of who we are emotionally, but then you go to that eighth house cancer. Now, eighth house is all about crisis, other people's crisis. Cancer is about nurturing people. Sag, uh, your spirituality a lot of times is actually being that strong person for other people when they're in the midst of a storm. And Sag, you're going to also see uh, your faith is going to be increased by how spirit uses you to comfort others. Cancer is about nurturing and comforting. And so the eighth house is about, you know, being able to really do a taboo subjects. So that means that, Sag, a lot of times you may have to comfort people that have gone through sexual abuse or physical abuse or deep trauma. And a lot of people that have seen people go through deep trauma, it could like shake their faith. And I'm not never saying that we, as a Sag, you won't have your faith tested or have doubts and doubts are fine, but, and doubts can increase your faith as you grow, but I think when you begin to see the healing power of your love and of your kindness, that itself is a type of spirituality that connects you to the divine. You know, random acts of kindness, right? When we, you know, one of the great spiritual teachers, when they ask him, where's your temple? Where's your church? He said, kindness is my temple. Love is my church. And you begin to see that in your life when you're able to nurture people through their problems. So Sag is a beautiful soul. If you're if you're hurting, go to a Sag because they will feel your pain and they'll do everything they can to nurture you. So don't shut off that compassion inside of you because it's your compassion for others when they're going through their hardships that actually make you feel closer to the divine. Then we go to that 12th house, Scorpio in the 12th. 12th house is the house of spirituality. You got Scorpio there. This tells me that when you begin to work on your own healing, when you begin to try to heal your childhood issues, when you begin to do maybe some what I call uh, psycho, psychoanalysis, you begin to go to talk therapy. See, there's something about exploring your own depth of your psychology, of your mental makeup, of tapping into your subconscious mind. As I said earlier, through hypnosis, meditation, prayer, journaling. When you tap in to your thoughts that maybe you haven't thought about and you bring them up to examine and to look at, it's that process of trying to dig really deep into why you act the way you do that you begin to have aha and an enlightenment of your true nature. Your true nature as an eternal soul that never dies, whose essence will go on even after you take your last breath. But Scorpio is all about deep, deep research. And so being in the 12th house, going into sacred books, whether you're in the Bible, whether you're in you know the Quran or any other sacred book, when you take the time to really dig in to the writings and the sacred texts, these things can illuminate you. There are people that wrote under inspiration of spirit and we can learn from these things. So Sag has a phenomenal ability to really research the things of the metaphysical nature of higher nature when they really put their soul into it. And so Sag, I'm telling you, really dig into books about emotional healing. Really dig into books about, you know, uh, being able to feel our feelings, and, and, and understand what those messages are. Our feelings are messages. Scorpio is about really feeling things deeply. But why are you feeling that? What's, what's the message behind the feeling? And you'll begin to see that your feelings are actually guide to you, guiding you to even more higher truth. Now, with that being said, we want to look at the planets that you got in 4, 8, and 12. The planets in 4, 8, and 12, these are planets that will affect you in a very spiritual, intuitive, 
emotional and even a divine way. Those planets, the things that those planets represent, they can activate you. They can activate your spirituality into a greater realm, into a higher experience than you've ever realized. Everything is spiritual. Everything is spiritual. Everything is spiritual. Especially when you allow yourself to get into your creativity. Pisces rules creativity. When you allow yourself to nurture other people. When you open up to yourself to that compassion. And then Scorpio, when you allow yourself to look at your wounds and your pain and allow God to come in and minister to you. It's okay to open up and share your hurt, your pain, your anger. When you open up deeply to source, source can come into the cracks of your spirit, the wounds and the depression and the hurt, and minister to you and show you you're greater than that hurt, greater than that pain, and truly see what you are on a divine level. Moshka, spirituality, enlightenment, the truth that is true for all time, every culture, man, woman, boy, girl, that's the truth you're after. And as a Sagittarius riser, that's the truth you'll receive. You will receive and feel your divine self before you transition to the next world, the next dimension, the next galaxy, you'll be ready and you won't be fearful because you will have had experiences that let you know, hey, there's something beyond this world and that something lives inside of me. So I hope you've enjoyed this series, The Four Aims of Life. You got to have a life purpose. Discover what your purpose is. Find out how you can be blessed financially so you can help other people and live a more comfortable life. Number three, what's going to bring you joy? What's going to bring you happiness? It isn't, you know, don't play it so safe and, and, and try to be so intense that, yeah, you made it to 80, but you didn't have any fun along the way. You didn't have any joy or excitement along the way. And don't ever get so old that you stop having fun and enjoying life and keeping that playful nature. You deserve to be happy. And more than all of that, don't ever lose your faith. It's okay to doubt. It's okay to question. In fact, I've doubted and I have questioned. But in the long run, somehow my understanding of God has only increased. My understanding of spiritual principles has only increased. And even when I have let go of the whole idea of spirituality, spirituality never let go of me. Spirituality will never let go of you because it's truly our essence, our divine self. Subscribe to the channel. Ring the notification bell. I love all my Sag Risers. Comment. Tell me, uh, tell me the different things that make you happy. Tell me the different things that you think about the universe and God. Tell me the things that are your life purpose. What is it you want to make? Uh, what kind of impact you want to make in this world? Thank you for watching.